that's the greatest part of our job is that we get to go to locations and see things that most people never do and never will. We get access into into high security places that most people could never get into and not everybody can just walk down to the city morgue and see a you know cadaver laying on a table all cut up and you know separated in different spots. I mean it's not something you want to see necessarily but it's just an example of some of the strange things that I've seen in this job. We're gonna go look at the Buddhist temple uh -huh. which is our best option. Well a locations um, manager their job is to obviously find locations. We should figure out which days we want to look up the street or look, you know, how much of the street we're going to see, then I'll make sure we have it booked and we have it signed. But every time we sign the street, it's big bucks to pay the city. They, I have files. I have a, a whole bunch of files. I have many, many, many hundreds and hundreds of these boxes full of different files from the ridiculous to the sublime. Once I've taped them all together, I, think I can then take the director through the location as if he was walking through the location. Yes. So you guys realize that the paint will be different when we get here, though? If we partition it, like this color, these colors are okay for Sunday school. The tech survey is when you have all the department heads come and talk about what they're going to do, what they want to do, so everybody's taking notes and making sure that it's all there on the day when we arrive to shoot. And I yeah. think that this is like... Well, the thing that you can't here. do here is yeah, after, the, like... Uh, yeah, well, we can be here till dusk, around. but... After hours, you can't shine lights up the hill towards the residents. A good location manager is always paying attention to the environment around, no matter if you're working or not. And some of the best locations I've ever found have been when I wasn't working. You're not looking for necessarily what it is you're looking for. And, it's, and, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, if you're looking for the interior of the Titanic, you don't go and look for boats. You go and look for uh, buildings that could play as uh, the boiler room or the whatever, you know. How do you see it all laying out here? Because I'm, I'm trying to get a visual because Ron, the son of the guy who owns this land, was a little bit concerned about us just completely filling this thing up with all kinds of stuff. So, and because I haven't seen our unit, because we haven't started shooting, I didn't know exactly how many trucks we'd have. Your job for finding locations as a location manager is just uh, the beginning. This could be, you know, catering right here. Put the, on the little flatter area next to the Mazda, that would be where the uh, Grips electric truck would Running be. Often the hard part is, is making sure you can get, you know, a thousand feet of trucks and a hundred people into the location to film. The entry level uh, for locations is you start out as a production assistant, a PA. We just generally help out. We're production assistants. So if we have guys running cable and they need a hand, so we'll come and help them out or something like that. Or... You know, if there's uh, someone up there and they're lifting up a dolly, we'll give them a hand. You're sort of a gopher on set and you help out in all departments. What we'll do is something as simple as garbage. If there's garbage on the ground, we got to clean that up because we want to keep these people happy where we're shooting. If I put some signs up and some pink tape, people get to set instead of wandering through Riverview. So I will just be putting signs up and flagging tape. Rolling. Quiet. Everybody quiet, please. Very important to know the functions of other departments. Shh. Sound department's gonna need to know when you come into a location, all the fans and the noises that, that, that are happening in that in particular building. Well, it's a church right off the bat. So it's made to echo. We have a couple, at least 100 people in there right now. She will receive the fullness of God's spirit. You sit on the bench. The benches are old, right? All you have to do is rock a little bit to the side and they'll creak and crack, crack, crack. And cut. Cut. Yeah. cut, thank you. Any small sound is just going to echo throughout this place, so you kind of got to keep a hitch on that kind of stuff. The pay uh, on a union show is, is nothing to whine about, but on a non-union show, you know, if you're getting 100 bucks a day, uh, when you count up the amount of hours that you put in for that 100 bucks, all of a sudden you're making less than minimum wage, but you shouldn't think of it like that. Think of it like, you know, it's, it's, it's one step on the ladder that I want to climb. You're always meeting people. You're meeting lighting guys, grip guys, directors. You're, like, you can, like, when we're doing casual time or something on break, if I'm not busy doing something else like Firewatch, I can go up to the director and I can say, you know, hey, how's it going? How did you get into this? You know? So it, there, you're always learning stuff like that, right? Some shows you can't do that, but on this one you can. Um, but you're always just, you, like, it's also getting your foot in the door, right? Learning the industry, learning what techniques you can do, what you can't do, stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm not going to be doing this for the rest of my life, but it's an excellent way to kind of get a basis of, of understanding how a shoot is going to work, how it's going to be organized, 
I know a lot more now than I did when I, before I started this thing. In the locations department, you know, you have, you, you're quite often the first uh, impression to the public. How you doing, big guy? You have to be friendly and outgoing. You just have to have that personality, that, that be a real people person. In our department, uh, you're, you're fielding complaints, and when someone's complaining, you have to be able to listen to them. There's loud noises, like we got uh, dogs barking over there, or guys running chainsaws, cutting down trees, or anything like that. We gotta cut them off from doing their thing, or, you know, ask them nicely. You could enter into the film industry and just start peeing and, and work your way through it. You would have to be very willing to volunteer. The more time you have on set, the more people will call you. I get some resumes of guys that have been to film school and produced this and they've, you know, uh, directed that. It's like, well, you know what, you're applying to be a production assistant, so to apply with all kinds of a resume, with all kinds of producing or directing experience means nothing to me. And I just sent my resume, I made sure it was very professional. If you have spelling mistakes and things like that, they will just throw it out. They don't have time for people that don't put the effort in. So when you're on a show with 10 different PAs locking up different areas, um, if you're down a, a desolate road and you're sitting on a chair and there's nothing to do and you've been there 10 hours already and you see a set of headlights coming at you, you know, you don't know who those headlights are going to be. Maybe it's the producer, maybe it's just somebody driving along. But get up, stand up, smile, wave them through. You're getting paid to meet all these film people of various experiences and so on. You're getting paid to meet them and network with them. It's a pretty good in. <laughs> and there's no Academy Award for location managing. Um, but yeah, it's really satisfying to, to take a director into a location or a crew into a location, especially if the director in the art department just really loves the look and they're just like, wow, what a great location. You know, you feel, you feel good that you're uh, able to, uh, to find it and to, and to offer that to the film.